Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the mint velvet throw. You can see a photo here in front of you of the blanket as well as uh, if you head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com you'll find some more photos of the finished blanket there as well. Uh, today I have my sample one worked here. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of it. <laughs> it is a very cozy uh, solid stitch and solid fabric throw similar on both sides so it is reversible uh, and it just features a simple reverse single crochet or crab stitch edging. It is uh, a modified version of the basket weave stitch so you have these beautiful large uh, checkered squares. It's just a very, very cozy blanket. For this pattern, I used five balls of the Bernat Velvet yarn, which you can see here in front of you. This is the color Mint Chip, which is also the color you'll see in my photo. It's a, a very, very, very soft yarn to work with. It's 100% polyester and uh, and is a bulky weight yarn. Although I consider it a little bit thinner to work uh, than some of the other bulky weight yarns. So for that reason I am using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook today and uh, then of course you'll need those five balls of uh, velvet yarn. Each of those balls has about 315 yards so in total you're going to need about 1500 yards, a little bit more, to work this blanket. The finished size is about 44 by 54 inches. If you would like to change the size of your blanket you will need a foundation chain with a stitch multiple of 20 plus 13. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out some of the other videos. Our blanket pattern today is worked in rows. So you're going to start by making a slip knot and then work your foundation chain. Uh, for the size that I have worked, you're going to need a chain of 153 stitches. But as I mentioned, if you'd like to change the size, you can use a multiple of 20 stitches plus 13. So today actually in the video I'm only going to make a small swatch just to show you how to work the blanket. So I'm actually going to only uh, make a foundation chain today of 33 stitches. But you can go ahead and chain 153. Once you have your foundation chain worked the length uh, that you requ require or 153 stitches. You're going to work one row of single crochet stitches beginning in the second chain from your hook. So it is a little bit hard to see uh, but you can count in there's one, two into that second chain and work one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row you're going to have a total of 152 single crochet stitches. Once you have worked a single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across, at the end of your row you're going to chain 3 and turn your work. Your chain 3 at the start of this row does count as a double crochet stitch. So you're going to skip that first stitch and we're going to work a double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So double crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, including that double crochet stitch, you will still have 152 stitches and will throughout uh, the entirety of this blanket. At the end of row 2 you're going to chain 1 and turn your work. We're now going to start the 
basket weave pattern. So in your first stitch you're going to start with a half double crochet stitch into the top of that first stitch. Next into each of the next 10 stitches you're going to work a front post double crochet stitch. So to work your front post double crochet stitch yarn over bring your hook in front of your work and insert your hook from the front through to the back out through the front again around the post of the next stitch. Yarn over draw up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. You're going to continue and do that for a total of 10 stitches. So that was the first one. There's number two front post double crochets three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So one front post double crochet around each of the next 10 stitches followed by one back post double crochet around each of the next 10 stitches. To work your back post double crochet yarn over, bring your hook to the back of the work, insert your hook from the back around the front of the post and out through the back again, yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two loops. That's your back of the back post double crochet stitch and you're, you'll see that it's going to push the top of your stitch forward which is going to give you that ribbed texture there on the front. You're going to continue uh, until you have a total of 10 back post double crochets. So there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You're now going to repeat that. So work one front post double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches followed by one back post double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. Repeat that all the way across to your final 11 stitches where you will work ten, one front post double crochet in each of the next 10 followed by a half double crochet into that final stitch. So go ahead and work that and then meet me back here. I'm here at the end of my third row. I'm back at my first stitch, which or the last stitch, which is the starting chain three, and you're going to work one half double crochet into that final stitch. You can then chain one and turn your work. For row four, we're going to want to keep all these ribs uh, stitch stitches here on the same side. So for row four you're going to start with that half double crochet into that first stitch and this time followed by 10 back post double crochet stitches. So one back post double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. There's five, and ten. 
Next, you're going to work one front post double crochet stitch in each of the next 10 stitches. and 10. You're then going to repeat that all the way across. One back post double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches and one front post double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches. Repeat that all the way to your final 11 stitches where you will work one back post double crochet in each of the next 10 stitches followed by a half double crochet into your final stitch. At the end of row four, you're going to come to your starting chain three there, or sorry, your beginning half double crochet, and you're just going to cro half double crochet into the top of that stitch. And that brings you to the end of your row four. For rows five through to ten, you're going to chain one and turn, and you're going to repeat rows three and four three more times. So you're working a total of six rows in uh, that pattern that you just worked. So a row beginning with a half double crochet and then 10 front post double crochet stitches followed by 10 back post and then your row four which started with 10 back post double crochet followed by 10 front post double crochet. So you're going to continue on for six more rows, repeat rows three and four uh, three more times and then meet me back here. At the end of row uh, 10, this is what your work is going to look like. And you're ready to begin row 11. And uh, starting in row 11, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse the direction of these stitches, which is going to give us our checkered effect. So what you're going to do is chain one and turn your work. And this time, instead of starting with a front post double crochet stitch, uh, we're going to work our half double crochet in that first stitch. And then we're going to work a back post double crochet stitch. So once again, yarn over, bring your hook to the back, uh, insert your hook around the post of that next stitch, and then complete your double crochet stitch. So your back post double crochet, you're going to back post double crochet around each of the next 10 stitches, and then you're going to front post double crochet around each of the next 10. So back post, You're going to see that you're pushing the top of the last row there forward. There's number 10. And then around each of the next 10 stitches, you're going to work a front post double crochet. Around the post, sorry.
You're then going to repeat that all the way across, back post double crochet around each of the next 10 stitches, and then front post double crochet around each of the next 10 stitches. Repeat that until your final 11 stitches, and then uh, finish off with a back post double crochet around each of the next 10, and then your half double crochet into your final stitch. I'm just working my final half double crochet at the end of my row 11. You can then chain one and turn your work. For row 12, you're going to start by working a half double crochet into that first stitch. And now beginning uh, in this row, you're going to start with a front post double crochet stitch around each of the next 10 stitches. And as you work this row, you're going to really start to see uh, the texture and how you're reversing uh, these blocks coming through. After you've worked 10 front post double crochet stitches, you're going to work a back post double crochet around each of the next 10 stitches. And then as you have probably figured out by now, you're going to repeat that all the way across to your final 11 stitches. And you'll work a front post double crochet around each of those 11 stitches or 10 stitches followed by your half double crochet in the final stitch. At the end of my row 12, I'm going to half double crochet into that final stitch, chain one, and turn my work. Now for the next six rows, you're simply going to repeat that row 11 and row 12 uh, three more times and uh, so for a total of six more rows and then uh, you can meet me back here and we'll continue on. At the end of row 18 you're going to work your half double crochet stitch, chain one and turn. From now on in the pattern, you're going to continue to work your blanket and you're going to work rows 3 through to 18 until your blanket from the beginning measures approximately uh, 44 inches or the uh, size that you desire. So once you reach that uh, size, and I'm not going to do it fully in this video, but once you reach that size and your work from the beginning measures approximately 44 inches, then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and just as we started down below with a row of single crochet stitches, we're going to work one row of single crochet stitches across the top. So then you can go ahead and single crochet into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row of single crochet stitches, you're going to chain one, but do not turn your work or fasten off. So go ahead, work your final, uh, work the rest of your blanket, and then you're going to work a row of single crochet stitches across the top, and then meet me back here. Once you've worked your final row of single crochet stitches, you're then ready to work the edging. So at the end of your row of single crochet, you're going to chain one, and you're not going to turn your work. At this time, we're going to work one round of reverse single crochet stitches. Uh, sometimes these are called crab stitches all the way around. 
So you don't need to turn your work, but instead you're going to bring your hook back into the previous stitch, insert your hook and work a single crochet. And you're going to do that in each stitch all the way across the row that you just worked. So working into each stitch, insert your hook, going backward, and complete a single crochet stitch. What you're going to see as you progress, as you can see here in the video, but uh, with this yarn it is challenging to see so you can actually feel it more uh, than you can see it, but you're going to get this corded ridge here all the way across. It's just going to give it a nice texture and really smooth out your edges as you go. So just continue uh, working all the way across, working your reverse single crochet stitches. On your edging, as you come to your corner stitch, you're simply going to continue working in that corner stitch. Uh, you'll only need one into it, and then you're going to turn your blanket and work along this rough edge. Now this rough edge doesn't have any clean places to put your hook, so you're just placing your hook and working the reverse single crochet hook a uh, stitch where it is comfortable for you. So you're just going to continue working along that edge. You don't want the stitches too spaced out uh, because they'll stretch your stitch out and you won't have that fun texture on the edge. Uh, but again, you don't want it too close because then it will also bunch up a little bit. So continue working all the way around and working around each corner until you come to your first stitch, your first uh, your first reverse single crochet. Uh, once you get back to your first corner you're going to join with a slip stitch, fasten off, weave in your ends, and your mint velvet throw is then complete. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, once again I invite you to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again. Until then, happy crocheting! Bye!